Dear students, my name is Mosi Masatu Mulibwa. I'm teaching linguistics and communication skills at the Open University of Tanzania here at the headquarters. I will take you through the course Communication Skills OFC or so, so OFP 017. This is the course for uh, OFP foundational program. It is a course for certificates, diploma, and undergraduate students, and it's very different course. Don't worry. So you are welcome to this course. Today we are going to talk about preliminary information about the course, which is essentials of communication. And here we are going to talk about the meaning and aspects of communication. There are a number of aspects that we are going to see concerning communication. You shall know the process of communication, meaning of communication, objectives. Why do we communicate and the significance of communication? How communication is important in our life? And we shall talk about the cycle, cycle of communication. How does communication take place? The direction, of course. And uh, we shall talk about the channels of communication. And we know for sure that the communication takes place through different channels and therefore you are welcome to this course and i hope you are going to enjoy this course now let us talk uh, start with objectives of this course but after studying this unit you should be able to one define communication two uh, describe the process of communication uh, three Describe the essential elements of communication. Four, explain the importance of communication. And we shall also talk about, describe the cycle of communication and uh, the channels of communication. So, let's go together. Introduction. The term itself communication. I know it's uh, quite familiar to most of us if you come across it. Uh, in fact, uh, it refers to an activity. It is an activity. Sometimes they say it's a process. We say it's a process. It refers to an activity that people perform every day. That's you wake up in the morning, you just communicate. Wherever you go, you communicate. Whether you have the ability to speak or don't have the ability, you communicate. That's why those who are not able to speak, they can communicate. Actually, it's said that as humans, we begin to communicate at the moment we are born. So you can see that at the moment we are born, we are, we are, we start to communicate. You know, the child is born when it is born, it begins to cry. A cry is a sort of communication. For example, so the, the cry of a baby draws the attention of its mother, thus making the mother to either feed or comfort the child. In this case, the baby's cry communicates a message to its mother. So there is something a child is communicating. So communication refers to an activity or process that serves to connect people through space and time. Space and time. So through these different dimensions, we can, uh, communication can save us, can connect us, can bring us together. All communication involves a person understanding others and having others understanding him or her. In this way, it unites people and person, person and person, person and a group, or group and a group. So you can see that communication unites people, brings people together, and nothing can take place if people cannot communicate. Studies have found out, however, that even through people communicate, 
even though people communicate since they differ, they are not as effective as they should be. And I want to tell you why it is important to study communication and why the Open University has opted for this course for you to take in your course of learning. So, you need to learn communication. It is not something natural. So the process of transmitting information from an individual or a group to another is a very complex process as it involves different stages. Hence, the purpose of this unit of study is to train you on how best to communicate with others. So when you, you come through this course, you will be able to communicate with others very effectively. You can communicate by speaking, by listening, by writing, by reading and whatever. So they can help you as a student in your career. So, this was an introduction, but let us talk about the meaning of communication as our first uh, objective. The word communication derives from the word common, which means, which refers, refers to share, exchange, send, along, transmit, talk, gesture, write, put in use, relate, etc., etc. In Latin language, uh, where the word was derived, it is communicatio. Communicatio is the same as exchange, send. Okay? So, since time immemorial, human beings are known to have communicated. It's like I'm repeating the things I'm talking about in a number of ways. In the traditional African society, people used to communicate in different ways. So you can say that communication began even before the event or invention of writings or print system or printing devices or these sophisticated modern systems of communication like telecommunication, mobile phones, I mean, and the others. For example, in some communities, even in Tanzania, in some communities in Tanzania, there are different ways people communicate in the traditional society to bring people together. And I will give you some of these examples. For example, in some communities there is a sort of way. In Sukuma community, this sort of way is mostly used. Uh, so they they, 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 they wail people, cry people, wail, wail, they shout and shout, and then they call for people. There is a certain cry, a certain wailing that brings people together. That something is not normal in that community. So there is occurrence of dangerous situation in that society. Maybe it may be an attack of a very dangerous wild animal or some other calamity or there is an invasion by some people or you can say there are some beefs or sneakers have come to a place. Likewise, different forms of human drum beats. In some communities they use drum beats. In some communities they use, they use, they use bell ringing, so they ring the bell. Then in some communities they use what we call horns. So they blow horns and then people come together when something has to take place. Maybe there is a meeting in community or a family Okay, rally. So people are all together to come by using those system of communication. So communication is there in our life even before the invention of writing and the modern systems of communication. So joy and celebration is so a grateful invitation and reception. These are issues that the traditional society use some sorts of communication. So in some cases the drum was used to announce the demise of the ruler or the lady, like the chief or the king. So when someone dies, let me give you an example from the community I come from. When someone dies, there is a bell ringing. So there is a, there is a sort of ringing uh, which distinguishes between when someone has died and distinguishes between when there is a public rally. Okay, so that's what I, we can say about communication in our life in the traditional society. So in modern times, communication between people and groups has evolved very much, especially after the establishment of the print, uh, audio and the visual media. And now we say the world now is becoming a village because of sophisticated communication systems. Furthermore, the advent of the internet 
has metaphorically speaking reduced the size of the world by making it possible for people from different places in the world to carry out face-to-face -face interaction. And we know now you can talk to people in the USA, any corner of the world. You can talk to these people, you can share with these people in a second. That's very possible because of new uh, invention in communication. So, we are continuing with the definition of communication so that we broaden our spectrum of understanding. Uh, in this unit, the term communication is used to refer to the process. That's the very simple definition we are taking into account. Uh, the term is used to refer to the process by which people are able to transfer meaning between themselves. Do we transfer meaning? We transfer meaning. meaning is the general term. We can transfer emotions. We may want to express our emotions. We may want to express our feelings to others. We may want them to know what we feel, what we think. So that's communication aiding us uh, as people. It is the process that allows people to share information, ideas, and feelings. So you see, that's what I'm saying. We can share. Where no meaning is transferred, no communication has taken place. So here we are saying the essence of communication is that meaning is exchanged. So if there is no exchange of meaning, there is ineffectiveness in communication. Maybe there are some barriers we shall see in some upcoming uh, lectures. There are some barriers what we call noises. Uh, communication may not take place and in this sense we say there is no meaning transfer and the purpose of communication is not achieved. So communication is a learning skill as I have said, it's something we have to learn. Most people are born with the physical ability of course to talk but we must learn to speak well and communicate effectively and it's not only to speak, it is also to write. For example, when I was still young. I didn't know to write, to write a letter, an application letter. I didn't know to attend an interview. I didn't know to attend a, a lecture. What, are, what am I supposed to do when I'm attending a lecture? But now I'm very familiar because I learned about communication. I can write a letter, I can write an email, whatever, and I can communicate. So, Speaking, listening, and our ability to understand verbal and non-verbal meanings are skills we develop in various ways. Yes, we develop skills. We are not born with these skills. We are just born with the ability to acquire these skills from the surrounding community. We learn basic communication skills by observing other people that those people we live with and modeling our behaviors based on what we see. So there are, we are adhering to norms of communication when we interact with the people surrounding us. So communication is an academic discipline. You can know, you must know that this is an academic discipline. Embraces a large world of study and the knowledge that relate to all the ways we communicate. So there are so many issues that include in including this complex issue of communication. It focuses on how people use messages to generate meanings within and uh, across various contexts, cultures, channels, and media. So that's why I've said in the previous that you have to learn. In the school, you have to learn. In all, the field promotes the effective and ethical, we can underline, effective and ethical practice of human communication. So there is effective, how do you communicate effectively? How do we achieve the aim of communication? And uh, how do you adhere to norms and traditions of the community you are situated? So this is communication. So it's a simple terms we say communication is the exchange of information. It's the transfer of meaning from one person to another, group to group. Or in some ways we say from one party's party to another. There we have two parties involved in communication, the sender, the receiver, as we shall say the elements of communication. So let us talk about why is communication important? I think you have ever asked yourself, I don't know if you have ever asked this question. Why is communication important, my students? 
In our daily understandings, of course, we spend most of the time, and I think you know this, uh, communicating with each, with one another. It's estimated that 75, this is the research, 75% of persons' day is spent communicating in some ways. Most of our communication time is spent in listening and speaking. That's what they have observed researchers. While a minority of that time is spent in reading and, 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 and writing. So in most cases, we listen and we speak. And in a few cases, we read and then write. These communication actions reflect skills which force our personal, academic, and professional success. So they are very important. So they are able to speak clearly and they are more eloquently on one hand, and it will like effectively on the other, have been recognized as the hallmarks of an educated person. So as an educated person, you have to learn communication. You must be able to speak, write, listen, and whatever. So, put in other words, these actions of communication are central in determining persons' ability to succeed or fail in life. So, you can see how communication is important, that you may fail or succeed in life if you communicate fully with the people you would wish to share to become your partners, partners in development. Explore how you interact with others in various kinds of contexts. As a university student, I'm telling you, an employee or a member of society in general. So you can see, you know, communication can lead to termination from a job. So you must be careful that communication is very important. And sometimes communication can lead to death. For example, if there is a fire accident and the communication breaks down, you can see that people can die, people can lose, they lose their properties. Who do you interact with and what information is exchanged? You can ask yourself this question. It's, uh, now, let me, before we go to essentials of communication, uh, let me give you this, this visual summary about communication by one scholar called Light, Light, I, I want to write on the board, Light 1980 is called Light, and the year is 19, 1988. It gives four uh, purpose, main purposes of communication. This guy called Light. The first one is expression of needs, wants, or you regulate the behavior of others to get something. So you express your needs. If you want something from somebody, you just communicate. Another, number two is information, that is transfer of information. You want to share information or convey information from one person to another, that is informing. Like when you go to, in the classroom, teaching and learning takes place in the form of informing. So another is number three, social closeness. Social closeness. That we communicate to establish and maintain our relationship with the others. This is what we call the small talk. That we want to maintain relationship. We become close when we communicate. I can give you a very good, a very funny example. Those who are in a relationship, you find that when they don't communicate, there is no communication. You find that they can fight. Uh, you find that they can they can go into conflict, and they, that can destroy their relationship. So communication is very important to keep our relationship. Number four is social attitude. This is uh, to conform to the social conventions of politeness. So communication helps us to conform to some norms, some traditions of the society we are situated in. So let me now, let us now talk about essentials of communication. So we are talking about the elements of communication that are never avoidable. So let us go direct these essentials of communication. Here is the diagram 
that indicates the very important elements that are required for communication to take place. The first element, and which are the major, we have given the, the circle, the sender and the receiver. The sender as the source of the message, and the receiver as the one who receives the message. And you can see that that communication goes back. The sender turning the role, the role to become the speaker by uh, encoding the message back to the sender. And the sender now turns into the receiver. That is the feedback. So in between these two people, uh, these two parties, we have the message, which is the content that they want to share. We have the channel, the way through the message can reach the receiver or and back to the sender. So let us describe these elements, sender, receiver, message, channel, feedback. So the sender, we say this is the source where information comes from. This is the source. It could, it could be an individual speaking or writing or signaling or gesturing, depending on the communication uh, 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 the communication environment, what we call communication environment. Number two is the message. This refers to the ideas, data, or feelings that the sender intends to share with the others. For example, what I'm sharing with you, this is the message. What I'm sharing with you now is the message. So, it is what I think I want to share with you. And when you are listening uh, to this message, you are also have something you want to achieve from this lecture. Channel, so this is the, so the route traveled by or used to send the message as it goes from the sender to the receiver. It refers to the form in which the idea all feelings delivered across. In spoken communication, this could include face to face, when you interact with this person face to face, you are all present at the communicative environment. And also, you can, by using meetings, uh, telephone or video conferencing, in written communication, it includes letters, when you write letters, emails, memos reports and the list is endless so that's the channel how we take the message to another person receiver we say this refers to one or more individuals for whom the message is intended so these are the, the a person or people or a group of people whom we want to have this message and for now it is you listening to me you are the receiver of the information i'm sharing right now so this is the call uh, i mean this is the call to which the message is targeted so where do i want to send the message if you want to send the message to your mom, you want to send to your daddy, you want to send to your, send to your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or wife, whatever, whatever. Or you are, you are an employer, you want to send a message to the employees. Maybe you can conduct it through a meeting. So you are the receiver. So the last and very important element, essential in the communication process is feedback. So, as we communicate, we need the feedback. Sharing never takes place. Exchange never takes place if we are not giving feedback. So, feedback, what is it? We say it refers to the verbal. Verbal, that means words. When we produce words, you can react in form of words when you listen to somebody or you read something. That's why when people are reading some a message on WhatsApp, they laugh on themselves. You can find out that they, you may feel you may think they are crazy. They are not. They that's the feedback they are giving. Although the speaker or the writer is not there present, non-verbal. That's any reaction you can do, which is not in form of words, from the audience. Audience who receive the message. 
this gorgeous whether or not the receiver has understood the message so this is the last stage in the cycle in the process of communication where we receive the feedback from the listener or the receiver or the writer or no, i mean the, the reader so that when i write something someone reads can give the feedback in form of a letter or can make a call through mobile through telephone or can write an email as a feedback to as a response to what i have stimulated so but there is an, another element that was added in some models of communication which was not there in the, the primary or the basic elements of communication and I, I want you to understand this concept noise and uh, sometimes we find that students do confuse this concept noise they think it's something that they have to produce with their tongues that something in form of vocal something in form of words shouting cries any anything that is more physical that is not the only thing we talk about the noise so now come you will find the right fact so noise this is the interference so the other word we use for noise in inter is interference or barrier to communication it's a barrier to communication something that impedes communication to take place so we call it barrier so it's a barrier or it is an interference to communication whether it is in form of or vocal or something more physical or something more internal to speak our listener that's something called psychological or something that has to do with the meaning of what we communicate if we don't give a clear message we may find that we are not effective communicators so that's the noise that will happen so this is interference that keeps the message from being understood so meaning is not exchanged or it is exchanged but not effective someone may be misled there is misinterpretation of the message so interference to communication may be physical you can see it may be physical in form of sounds or noises or objects anything surrounding the communicative uh, event or psychological in nature so physical interference keeps the message from being heard properly we shall talk about uh, the barriers to communication in the upcoming lectures psychological interference occurs when communication receivers are distracted by feelings that disturb the mind of the receiver so you find for example i'm teaching here i'm on a lecture you are listening but you find you are not psychologically fit some people say i'm not in the mood so you're not in a listening mood and therefore you are affected psychologically and you will never understand properly what i'm sharing here and therefore let me let me argue that be an effective listener and this course helps you to become an effective listener this uh, explains for instance why a hungry person cannot be able to read listen or like effectively when you're hungry that's a problem that can happen with you so let's talk about the main categories of communication we are done with the elements of communication we have talked about the sender the receiver the message the channel the feedback and we have added one element the noise and i hope you have understood and now I take you to another element, we have another thing we want to talk about today. Many categories of communication or many types of communication. Uh, we have, uh, we send and receive information through a number of ways, of course. We have no one way of communicating. There are so many, but we classify into two main. So the ways can be categorized as verbal communication and the nani verbal verbal communication and non-verbal so there are two major ways we can communicate verbal verbal means words words 
So this is a communication that takes place in the form of words. These words may be written or spoken. So there are, in most cases, we communicate by using words. But sometimes we do communicate by using non-verbal, non-verbal cues. You got non-verbal cues. Non-verbal cues. These are issues that have to do with uh, actions. They have to do with gestures. They have to do with any sort of movements that we do when we are communicating. So it is a we call it wordless communication. The communication that does not involve words but involves signals. This is a sort of communication we call nonverbal communication. And we know in some in most cases they are paired with verbal communication when we want to communicate fully or to simplify our communication or to make us enjoy from each other as we evolve in the communication. So, in order to become a successful communicator, you, I'm telling you, you should be sure that you understand well the verbal and the non-verbal strategies of communication. So in many organizations like a school, a workplace, uh, these types of communication are continually exchanged, oftentimes, without much Planning, even though that such communication are taking place. So sometimes we are very subconscious. But sometimes when you communicate, you find him, you shake your hands, you shake your heart, head, you move your lips, you wrinkle your, 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 your face, uh, you, you, you move your hands, you, you can do any sort of uh, movement or gesture, or you stand in a certain mode, uh, in a certain style, or you can find the ladies when they are talking, they do sort of this or there, so that is a sort of communication. Okay, sometimes you may communicate unintentionally. Okay, so verbal, this refers to various models of sending and receiving used by using words. So analyze by using words, that is verbal. This includes both spoken and written, as I have said. Non-verbal, this refers to a form of communication which make use of body movements, body movements, you don't produce words. Or gestures instead of, or in addition to, so you can use instead of words, or you can use in, in addition to words. So I'm saying in addition to, or instead of sounds, verbal, language, or other forms of communication, or in addition to. So you can pair verbal and nonverbal communication in a, a single communicative event. It includes all manners of interaction, interaction that allow us to communicate without using words. So we are not using words, but we communicate. People say, action, speak louder than words. Actions. So facial expression, facial expression, uh, gestures, eye contact, uh, an uh, example of nonverbal communication. So, first expression you find someone is doing this way. Okay. So, doing this way, you can see on my face. Doing this way. So, that's what we call facial. Or oh, someone, someone can, can, can display a smile. That is a sort of communication. Or oh, someone can display a facial, a facial of sadness. You find someone is sad or someone is disappointed. So the use of facial expression to communicate. So that is non-verbal and verbal communication. And the more information you will find as you read the notes on the Moodle or in your accounts. Okay? Sorry. So we are, those are main categories of communication. Uh, okay? So now let me talk about something that is not here, but I have added it for you, and I hope you are going to enjoy it. I want to talk about uh, this sort of non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication. Uh, these examples of non-verbal communication. 
we have six examples of non-verbal communication and I want to write them here. Okay? So let me put them here. We have chronemics. Chronemics. That is number one. Number two, I don't that we have vocalis. Vocalis or para language. Para language. And uh, number three, we have the so the so-called artists. And number four, kinesis. 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 And uh, number five, we have the so-called proxemics. Sorry. Proxemics. Number six, we have the so-called artifacts. Artifacts. So we have these different types of uh, non-verbal communication. One is vocalics or like acronyms. Number two is vocalics of a language. Number three is haptics. Number four is kinesis. Number five is proxemics. And number six, number six is artifacts. So prosemics. Prosemics means time. Time. So time we are talking about the personality, the punctuality, the speed of speech as we communicate. The speed of speech as we communicate. That is prosemics. They add something or the meaning when we communicate. That is prosemics. Number two, vocalics or para language. Here we are talking about the voice, the volume of your voice, the tone of your voice, the pitch or the intonation. You can find that we distinguish our voice as we speak. Sometimes we go up, sometimes we go down. There are some sort of contours, contours, contours as we speak. We don't speak flat rate. Our voice is not flat rate. Sometimes we go, we have a high volume or low volume. You! I'm listening to you! You, I'm listening to you. You see, we are distinguishing our voice and then whatever we are doing in that way, we are communicating. There's something we are communicating. When we want to insist something, we change our volume. When we are very sad, we change our volume as we speak. Some people are very angry, they speak with a high volume. So even the, the pitch is high or low, so you can find even their tone, their intonation, okay? So that is what we call the vocalics, how we use our voice or our sounds uh, to speak or to share with people. Number three, we have said about haptics. Haptics has to do with something touch. We have people who, when you speak to them, every time you find they are, they are, they are, they are beating you on the shoulder, or they are touching you. They will never speak to you before they have touched you. So that is, they are using what we call haptics, and this really depends on their relationship with the people they are speaking with. So some people sometimes they hug, they can do hugging, they can shake hands. So we are doing the touch system, that is haptics. So it's non-verbal, we are not using words, but they are sort of communication we are making. And it is that explains even the authority. When a mother is talking to a child, can touch a child on the shoulder or the head. Oh, how are you my child? How are you feeling that they should touch on the head or on the shoulder or Whatever. A husband and a wife, they are their sort of touch. So it differs depending on their relationship. So we call it haptics. And number four is kinesis. Kinesis means movement. So the movement. This is the body language, the body movement. Like a sort of gestures like hands, like you are you are putting here, you are using legs, 
or whatever you know, the way you are standing, what we call posture. Some people stand this way when you are going on the show. Oh, you see, some people are standing this way, some people are standing this way when they are taking a, a snap. So you see, that is also a sort of communication. So there is also facial expressions, as I told you, about the use of face, the face. You can talk about something. How someone can uh, use a face uh, to express a sort of meaning. Let's say a girlfriend can use a face to express a sort of meaning to a boyfriend. That is what we call kinesis. The mo any sort of movement has meaning in communication. Number five is proxemics. Proxemics is the term that means distance. The distance between the speaker and the listener, especially in the environment when the speaker and the listener are all present in the communicative environment. So distance maintained between the sender and the receiver has some sort of meaning. So people of intimacy, people of the same relationship, people of the same age group, the peers, the peer, the peer mates, when they communicate, they have a sort of proxemics. When they come closer to one another, you can find a boss and a, an employee. There is a distance they have to keep. A mother and a wife. And a mother and a child, or a, 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 a mother and a, a son, they can keep the distance. There is a sort of distance they have to keep. Or a boyfriend and a, a girlfriend, a husband and a wife, they are very close proximity. So they are very close. So that expresses something. If you find people are very close and touch way, what we call uh, zero distance, you may say these people are relationship. They are boyfriends and girlfriends. So the last one I have said is artifacts. Artifacts, this is appearance. Appearance. Appearance is something has to do with clothing. The way you clothe, you put on your clothes. You see people who go for the gangsters. You know how they, they, they dress. Uh, the workers in a company, you know how they dress. It has meaning. You don't have to say this is a nurse, you don't have to say this is an engineer or an architecture. You look at the clothes they are wearing, you don't say, you don't have to ask you, is this a police? You look at the clothes, the kind of clothes they are putting on, they communicate something. So there is something that we call uh, air style, air style also communicates something. We have these people, the, 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 the singers, the stars. The, these people are their own, the superstars are their own communication. So you know they are kind of air, air style, the chef style or the air style if it's ready. You can see the difference. Or what somebody is carrying in hands. Someone is carrying something generous. Uh, even the lifestyle communicates something. So that these are the sorts of non-verbal communication, the six ones. They are saying prosemic. Prosemic means time. Vocalics of a language means the voice, the volume or the voice. I mean, haptics means the touch. Kinesis means the movement. Prosemic means the distance between the inter interactants, uh, people involved in interaction. I mean, the artifacts. I mean, they appear. Is how do I appear? Like I'm appearing here. You can know it's something. There's something you have to communicate. And therefore. Uh, let me take you to another thing which we want uh, to share this day. So, let me talk about the cycle of communication by the aid of the, the diagram. This is a mod. Uh, you can look at that communication needs a context. And this context, sometimes we call it the common framework of reference. Context means the sender and the receiver, they have certain backgrounds they share. They share something in common, that's why they are involved in communication. So before you come into communication, there are some issues, of course, they are not issues that you have to discuss with your interlocutor, but they are issues that are there, they define our communication. So the context, 
that is what we want to say. The common understanding. You share the culture, you share the meaning, you find the gangsters, they have the way they speak language, they use slangs, which they are, we call it a concealing language in linguistics. It's the language that an outsider of that group will never understand even if he is present, even if he or she knows the language uh, they are speaking, maybe in Swahili or English. But they may not understand what they are talking about. So context. So we have the sender. This sender has the role. The role of the sender is to encode the message. And they can select the medium, the medium. That is the way through the, chat, the message reaches the receiver. You can use your mobile phone, you can use an email, you can use a written form or anything. So through that medium, you send your message by a certain channel. Uh, and you have said the channel can it can be on or face to face. Uh, it can you can it can be the use of a mobile phone. You can be the use of internet or whatever. And you send the message. The message. What you send uh, is the meaning. It is the point where you can call, they negotiate the meaning. And so in between that cycle, there is the message. All everything involving here is something has, that has to do with the message. So it's the message that is bringing us together. So meaning is negotiated at this stage. So the receiver decodes and they interpret, interprets. So to decode is different from encoding. Encoding is when you are giving, you have an idea in your mind. You assign meaning to that idea. You change that idea in form of language. If it's in form of words or in form of body uh, language or signals. And then you send. The receiver receives the message and he does or she does what we call decoding. Decoding is receiving the sound signals or those physical signals giving them meaning in a particular language. And then, that is what we call interpretation. As you interpret, and then you write another message. So you find at the center there is a message. And that message, you give another message, you give the message, that's the feedback, to the receiver. And that's how communication takes place. So if you go in your lecture notes, you will check page 45 a textbook for more advanced diagram. So there is there a textbook that will help you. So it is called lecture notes on this one. So you will find it. So in the above diagram, we have a context governing the cycle of communication. So the context, the common understanding, the issues that we share as people involved in communication. So this means that communication does not occur in a void or in space. It doesn't occur in nothing. Participants always communicate within a situation or a setting. That is what we call a context. So this situation or setting defines the context. And therefore, it is something that governs us to communicate. And even when we exchange information, it depends, it may be even our relationship. That is the context. It may be the time we are communicating, the place we are. The environment we are and uh, the purpose of our communication. What, why do we want to communicate? Therefore, whatever is there, it is what defines our communication. It, uh, it is what that impels us to communicate. So the setting we have. Uh, so therefore, I can say context refers to the environment. The environment. Environment may you know, may not be only physical. So environment may be the place where we are, the physical place. It can be a condition in which the communication encounter is taking place. That's according to Steinberg 2007. It may be the conditions. And the conditions is something general. I have said about even time. I have said about even our relationship. I have said about even uh, the language we are using, even the purpose of our communication, and even the culture, the norms we share when we communicate. That is what we call the context. 
Also, there is what we call the common framework of belief reference that we have something shared. You know that to be able to communicate. You may find some days you receive a message in your mobile phone. That message was not intended for you, and it was a wrong message. And therefore, when you read that message, you don't understand because you don't share the common understanding with the sender. So the message was not intended for you. So you are not in the same context of communication. So communication is contextual. That's what we can conclude. And it is influenced by several factors, such as time, as I have said, physical progress, the relationship, etc., etc. So, this marks the end of communication. Before we conclude, I want to give you some few references which you can go and read. So, they are there even in your, in your notes for the Moodle, you will find them. Here are just a few because of space and time. We have Albert Meyer 1972, Nonverbal Communication. Chicago, that's the press where it was published. Aldine, Adaton, that's the publisher. There is number two, Aldai, Aldai, in 1990. Bodily Communication. Second edition, New York International University Press. The last one is Livingstone, DRS. Sharon and A. Glenn, Glenn, 2004. How to use body language. So there are so many references, you will go there and find them. But these are just a few. And therefore, I want to end up here. And before I can say thank you, I want to say thank you through what we have learned today. Today we were learning about communication process and the essentials of communication. We have seen how the historical background as introduction, how communication started and how is communication in our daily life. We have also spoken about the definition of communication. When we say communication, what do we mean? And we have simply said communication is the exchange of sharing information between one party to another, or one person to another, or a group to a group, or a person to a person. So that's the simple definition, and that is very basic and very essential. So the other thing we have spoken about is uh, the types of communication, the major types of communication. The ways of communication said we have two. We have verbal, that means words, and the non-verbal. The non-verbal we have said sometimes we communicate by not using words, but of course we find ourselves communicating. So that is non-verbal. The other word, other thing we have learned today is about the essential elements of communication. And then we have seen that there are several essential elements in communication that they have to involve in order communication to take place. We have said communication has to take place when there is a sender, there is the message, there is the receiver, there is the channel, and even there is the feedback. So when no, even one element is not there, communication will never take place. People will never share meaning as we have said. And therefore, we have added one element about the noise. And the scholars came and read and said this is also another element of communication because it involves it involves in the communication process. And therefore, we have to be very careful as we communicate. And we have said noise is not only something physical. The shouts, so the cry, or the voice noise of the objects around our communicative uh, environment. It also has something to do with our psychological status. It has also to do with the language we use. How do we effectively use language to communicate? How, or how do we signal effectively? So that is also another element, we call it noise. They have said the other term for noise is various or 
interference, something that may cause communication not to take place. So, dear students, this marks the end of our communication. I thank you for listening. Uh, in the next lectures, I will take you through to other issues in communication key aspects in communication like the barriers to communication, uh, the modes uh, of communication and the models of communication, communication models. We go to the theoretical part and the other parts, uh, there is my fellow who is going to take you through when I'm done with this part. Thank you very much for listening and giving me your time.